Hello again, guys. Now, uh, at this point, I went and I got my uh, my CMOS uh, virtualization enabled. So now I'm going to try to start up my same virtual machine. Um, in this particular system, it was under a virtualization tab in the security part of the um, of the CMOS. So uh, it's somewhere similar in some of the HP machines. Um, so I'll just give you an idea of where you can look for it. So when I go to start it up, I just click on it. I click the start button and I wait. And the machine should start to boot up for me any second now. So um, the, the first time the machine boots up takes a little longer than than, than most of the, the rest of the times, but it's still not too bad. Uh, now, the interesting thing about the way this virtual machine stuff works is that this machine is a complete machine, just like it was a, a separate desktop or a laptop sitting right next to your machine, as far as your machine is concerned, for most stuff. Okay, One of the little things that are a bit different is that uh, the right control key is the uh, is one of the special keys for uh, this thing? You'll see it down here. You can remap it to something else, but that's what lets you uh, kind of access the inside host. But to log into this machine, the easiest way to do it is you just click on the machine link here, and you go down and click on Insert Control Alt Delete, or that right control button and delete key at the same time will do the same thing. Okay, the password is the one that's listed on the, uh, the spot where you downloaded the file from. So then you just have to hit enter and you get to wait for everything to start up. And at this point, you might get a warning to say that uh, Oh, I'll to restart, do I? All right. You might get a warning to say that you need to uh, activate your uh, your Windows operating system again. Uh, when that happens, all you got to do is act. You just go through the activate. Don't put in a product key and hit activate, and it'll give you however many. It'll say there's like uh, 118 days left or 160 odd days left. Well, whatever the length of time it is, less the uh, the couple of days since I activated the the virtual machine in the first place, so you will most likely have to do this one reboot right away as well. And now we wait. I'm gonna use the control, the right control delete key to log in this time. All right, so this is your virtual machine. Here's where you'll end up doing a lot of your stuff. Um, okay, I'm not seeing a warning to activate, so we're probably good. Um, oh, no, it's not activated. So your Windows machine's not activated, so you're going to have to come over and click on the activate button like so. Leave the product key blank. Just say next. This will let you, your machine work as a. Um, if you don't do that, you're, you're going to have to do that inside of a week or two. So we got 164 days left on this. If you were to do this tomorrow, you'd have 163 days. Um, it's important that you do do that activation step though because you're not going to be able to do any of the other stuff until it's activated. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, other than that, a couple of things you should probably do. You should probably fix your time zone up um, and then you're pretty much good to go. So uh, 
just keep that in mind now, guys. You need to make sure the virtualization is turned on on your CMOS. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to see the 64-bit version of Windows here. And this version of Windows 8 only works in 64-bit. If there was a 32-bit version of it, that's what I would have given you because it wouldn't have had that headache with the... Um, with the um, with the CMOS, uh, and then two after you get your Windows installed, you have to make sure you go in and activate it. So now that we got that much done, we're good to go. I'm gonna close this one up, and I'll talk to you guys later as we get into doing a lot of this stuff. All right, talk to you later. Bye for now.